in Chicago for the NASCAR Cup Series. And you might be wondering, well, why is Misco Electric here at NASCAR? And that is because of what's undercover here. Now, all these seats are gonna be filled with media and soon they're gonna be pulling the cover on this ABB all electric number 35 NASCAR. And ABB invited me here to get all the details on it. Will it have its own series? How far is it gonna be able to go on the track? We're gonna find out. As you can probably tell and may be aware by now, we're here to announce a very special partnership. The founding partner of NASCAR's impact program. And we have a special prototype to unveil as part of that. Behold the all electric NASCAR prototype. I wasn't expecting a compact utility vehicle, but it makes sense because CUVs seriously outsell sedans which currently dominate NASCAR. The age-old stock car racing slogan is win on Sunday and sell on Monday. Participating automakers want spectators to get excited about owning the vehicles they see on track. I spent the whole weekend learning about ABB number 35 from all the experts and you are currently watching the bite-sized version of my coverage. See the link in the description if you want to watch the extended edit at the Misco Electric Industry Channel. Let's move right to the highlights with some powertrain specifications. All right, I'm really looking forward to talking to the vehicle systems engineer here, CJ, who's going to give us a little bit more insight about the guts of this vehicle. So why don't we start right off on the front? which we have a nice peek into under the hood. Thank you for having me. And we're super excited to talk about what we've done with our OEM partners, uh, to Toyota, Ford, and GM. So this car is based off of our next gen car that you'll see racing around the track any Sunday. Um, what we have here is a modular front clip. The rear clip is integrated, unlike the next gen car where it's a modular rear clip as well. The reason why we did that was for motor packaging, uh, gearbox packaging, all of that. Um, so if we look inside the hood, what you'll see right off the bat is there's, there's no engine uh, that you would see in a cup car. Um, but what you do see is a single speed gearbox. Um, so there's two gearboxes. The exact same gearbox is in the front, is also in the rear. Uh, we also have our motor um, with our HV cables going in, uh, denoted by the uh, orange wires. We have a single motor up front, two motors in the rear. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle, um, which is something, again, us at NASCAR aren't used to working with, uh, with our real wheel drive cars. Um, but for the most part, the heart of this car is the next-gen chassis. So if we look at the suspension components, the front suspension is uh, identical to a next-gen car. Uh, we both have oval setups and road course control arms. As far as the water cooler as well, this is based off of the next-gen water cooler, also our inlet duct. A uh, really cool thing on this uh, body is instead of the carbon body that we run on the next gen, this is a flax seed uh, sustainable body. What you'll see on here, instead of coring, they have power rib. Power rib is that what actually gives the body work structure. We obviously know that carbon fiber is not only lightweight, but it's extremely strong. So can you talk about the properties of that flax and how is the strength in comparison? So strength is comparable to uh, carbon um, with the power ribbing. They also have the ability to put coring inside it. Um, it's really nice to work with when you're, whenever you're in the shop, you can always tell someone's cutting on it because it smells like a wood shop. Um, so that's a big difference than uh, working with carbon. Now, as far as the battery goes, this is a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack. So can you talk to, or do you know if there is a specific reason to why this size? I'm sure it has to do with fitting into this chassis, but can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that was probably right off the, the, the bat was our biggest thing, was trying to figure out how we were going to put a battery in a car that was developed for an IC uh, engine, correct? Based off of our vendor uh, who supplies our battery, we had a couple of selections. Um, the primary thing was weight. Um, so we wanted to find that balance uh, between weight, runtime, uh, and kind of packaging as well. Uh, so we were, we were trying to figure out the best way to even all of those things out and get the best performance, get the best battery life with what we had available to package in. And we said, okay, where do we have space available? A lot of different vehicles, you have the skateboard design, um, you have the battery pack design, different things. So the biggest thing that we saw with the first prototype was, okay, let's make it reasonable. So we ended up putting it on the right side of the car because that's the most space that we have available in the car. And that's kind of how we ended up getting to where the battery is now. The battery is loaded up underneath the car. Uh, so basically what we have to do is there are you know about 20, 
bolts underneath that secure the floor uh, to, or secure the battery to the chassis itself. 20 bolts is not that many bolts. Do you ever see that there could be a potential for like a battery swapping? I know this is a prototype, so we're kind of thinking large here, but do, is there any potential or thoughts behind what it could be if it does go into a series? Yeah, we, we've talked about it, but right now it is a prototype car. Uh, we haven't really looked too much into what that looks like for battery swaps, but what other, you know, our, our partners over at Ford, GM and uh, Toyota and some of the stuff that they do in other series and things like that, if it were to ever get to that point, you know, it would be a conglomerate of all of us coming together and, and figuring out what that looks like, um, you know, moving forward, if that works ever. But again, this is a prototype and our focus is showing off the technology that we have uh, and that we're extremely excited, especially with our partners, ABB. I know, see, I'm not trying to get too excited, but I am excited. <laughs> um, one other thing is that, you know, the performance on this is pretty amazing considering the Cup Series car run at up to 670 horsepower and this thing outputs over 1300 horsepower. So can you talk a little bit about the performance elements and how long this will run? Yeah, so we've done uh, some testing on performance and done simulation on the battery. Um, the, the biggest thing that we want people to understand is while this car is able to get up to 1,360 horsepower, um, that's at peak power, right? So you have a trade-off with peak power and your battery life. You, you can't run it 30 laps around, you know, Chicago at peak power just because you're going to drain your battery. Um, so we've, we've messed around and with region strategies and, and different things like that, which has been different for us. It's also been different for David Reagan, who's been our test driver throughout this event, um, uh, kind of relearning what that looks like in terms of battery savings, you know, battery management. How do you think the fans are going to respond to something like this, especially if it doesn't make noise? I think they'll be excited. So that is that is also one thing. The car makes noise. It, it, it makes noise in a different way, right? Uh, the cool thing about this car that you don't necessarily get to experience in an IC car because of the sound is all of the vehicle dynamics that is going on on a racetrack. Um, so, you know, sitting at Martinsville, actually being able to hear the wheels chatter uh, to say, okay, you know, maybe we put a little bit more cross in, um, things like that. So it's, it's, it's interesting to be able to hear the things that David is saying coming off the track and saying, you know, this, 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 and this. And it's like, well, yeah, we actually heard it because it is quieter than, a, than an IC car, but it still has a very, BV specific sounds. I think our fans will be excited because it's we're, we're pushing technology um, and we're trying to show them uh, what we can do here at NASCAR, um, but also what our OEMs are doing in their production cars um, and everything in between. Well, it's been a treat talking to you, CJ. So thanks for spending some time with us. And so we much. hope a series will come out of this eventually. So stay tuned, but thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. Now that we have a good grip on the technical aspects of the ABB number 35 all-electric NASCAR prototype, I'm sure you're ready to see and hear it in action. David Reagan just said that the top speed that he hit while he was doing hot laps here for us was 120 miles per hour. Can you speak to your experience? Because obviously you've been in NASCAR for a long time and this is a little bit different because you have a tri-motor setup. So can you speak to the all-wheel drive and what the feeling is with the difference between these powertrains? Yeah, well, well thank you. And, and first of all, I feel privileged to be asked by NASCAR and you know the ABB folks to help uh, make some laps and uh, develop this prototype. I think uh, a lot of hard work and, and effort went into really, you know, perfecting this stock car with, uh, you know, three electric motors, like you said, a lot of power, a lot of technology that, that we've really never had before. Yeah, I've, I've been used to driving a, a rear wheel car and, and trying to, to manage, uh, you know, tire spin. And, and, you know, a lot of my driving senses I hear 
and feel based on the engine and the sound of the the, the engine noise. And so now to you know have some different feel, uh, a lot of acceleration uh, when all four corners of the race car are accelerating. Uh, it accelerates faster than than anything I've ever driven before. So I think we've really just scratched the surface on the potential. You know, a few hot laps this morning at the uh, Chicago Street Course race. Uh, you know, it was fun to just do that. What well, we've had some practice on some ovals uh, back uh, in Martinsville, Virginia, and and the break capability with the, the regen system activated is incredible but uh, the acceleration is, uh, is is really special do you think there's anything that would change the hearts and minds of NASCAR fans when we talk about introducing electrification in this case yeah I mean I think give it a, a try I mean I'm as much of a traditionalist as they come I'm kind of that old school racer but man I, I love the technology that's behind this car and I think it allows the driver to really uh, drive harder and and get more out of the vehicle um, and it also challenges the driver in different ways and so I think for the race fan uh, you can still appreciate a really good race I think the drivers will have to learn how to adapt to some of those, uh, you know, different senses and, and feelings that they have inside the race car with no loud engine, you know, burning fuel and burning oil. It's just another challenge, uh, you know, as our world continues to evolve around us. I, I think the cars that we race on the weekends and, and certainly the ones that we buy from our local dealerships and, and that you and I drive to work and, and drive to the grocery store, that that's changing too. So I think first and foremost, you want something that's fast, but also can put on a good show. And, and I think think that, uh, you know, these EV cars can certainly do that. And um, yeah, I've been uh, very privileged to be able to have some fun and, and make some laps so far. Well, thank you for spending time with us today, yeah, David. Yeah. Yes. And thanks for putting on a show for us. Yeah, <laughs> so will NASCAR bring an electric series to life? We're trying to gauge the reaction from the fans. Like, like what, do they, what do they think? Is this is something they could get excited about? I think so. Uh, never say never. I mean, it's, it's an interesting idea. And you know, if every one of the fans here in Chicago say, hey, next year we want to see an EV series on the racetrack, if there's a business case for it and uh, with collaboration, then who knows? A, a race fan loves performance. Yeah. And then if for anyone who's ever driven an EV, the first time I drove an EV, just the instant torque and the instant acceleration is something that not only you feel, but as a fan, you see it. Motorsports excites our fans and hopefully can educate them and, and get them more interested in EV vehicles. Very excited to be a part of it. And I think the rollout has been fantastic. And we are excited to be their premier partner for this new race series when it gets launched. Oh, I saw a wink there. When it gets launched, let's see. There is no doubt that the ABB number 35 all-electric NASCAR prototype attracted a steady stream of race fans throughout the weekend. Well, this has been a treat coming to Chicago and experiencing a race with NASCAR, but not only that, seeing the hot laps of the ABB number 35 all-electric EV prototype. And what's interesting is what we've heard from not only the NASCAR engineers, but also electrification in general and how it's gonna impact NASCAR. Now that thing ripped and it was exciting to see. And not only that, it did make, a, I thought, a very exciting noise, but what are your thoughts on it? Do you think that there will be an electric series available in NASCAR in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.